The Italian Front or Alpine Front Italian, Fronte Alpino, in German, Gebirgskrieg Mountain War", was a series of battles at the border between Austria-Hungary and Italy, fought between 1915 and 1918 in World War I following the secret promises made by the Allies in the Treaty of London, Italy entered the war in order to annex the Austrian littoral and northern Dalmatia, and the territories of present-day Trentino and South Tyrol. Although Italy had hoped to gain the territories with a surprise offensive, the front soon bogged down into trench warfare, similar to the Western Front fought in France, but at high altitudes and with very cold winters. Fighting along the front displaced much of the civilian population, of which several thousand died from malnutrition and illness in Italian and Austrian refugee camps. The Allied victory at Vittorio Veneto, the disintegration of Austria-Hungary and the Italian capture of Trento, Bolzano and Trieste ended the military operations. History Pre-war period While being a member of the Triple Alliance which consisted of Italy, Austria-Hungary and Germany, Italy did not declare war in August 1914, arguing that the Triple Alliance was defensive in nature and therefore Austria-Hungary's aggression did not obligate Italy to take part. Moreover, Austria-Hungary omitted to consult Italy before sending the ultimatum to Serbia and refused to discuss compensation due according to the art. 7 of the Triple Alliance. Italy had a long-standing rivalry with Austria-Hungary, dating back to the Congress of Vienna in 1815 after the Napoleonic Wars, which granted several regions on the Italian peninsula to the Austrian Empire. More importantly, a radical nationalist political movement, called Unredeemed Italy Italia Irredenta, founded in the 1880s, started claiming the Italian inhabited territories of Austria-Hungary, especially in the Austrian littoral and in the county of Tyrol. By the 1910s, the expansionist ideas of this movement were taken up by a significant part of the Italian political elite. The annexation of those Austrian territories that were inhabited by Italians became the main Italian war goal, assuming a similar function to the issue of Alsace-Lorraine for the French. However, of around 1.5 million people living in those areas, 45% were Italian speakers, while the rest were Slovenes, Germans and Croats. In northern Dalmatia, which was also among the Italian war aims, the Italian speaking population was only around 5%. In the early stages of the war, Allied diplomats secretly courted Italy, attempting to secure Italian participation on the Allied side. Set up between the British Foreign Secretary Edward Grey, the Italian Foreign Minister Sidney Sunino and the French Foreign Minister Jules Cambon, Italy's entry was finally engineered by the Treaty of London of 26 April 1915, in which Italy renounced her obligations to the Triple Alliance. On February 16, 1915, despite concurrent negotiations with Austria, a courier was dispatched in great secrecy to London with the suggestion that Italy was open to a good offer from the Entente. The final choice was aided by the arrival of news in March of Russian victories in the Carpathians. Salandra began to think that victory for the Entente was in sight, and was so anxious not to arrive too late for a share in the profits that he instructed his envoy in London to drop some demands and reach agreement quickly. The Treaty of London was concluded on April 26, binding Italy to fight within one month. Not until May 4 did Salandra denounce the Triple Alliance in a private note to its signatories. On 23 May, Italy declared war on Austria-Hungary. Campaigns of 1915–1916 During the Italo-Turkish War in Libya 1911-1912, the Italian military suffered equipment and munition shortages not yet repaired before Italian entry into the Great War. 
At the opening of the campaign, Austro Hungarian troops occupied and fortified high ground of the Julian Alps and Karst Plateau, but the Italians initially outnumbered their opponents 3 to 1. Topic: <laughs> Battles of Asonzo in 1915. An Italian offensive aimed to capture cross the Soca river, take the fortress town of Grisia, and then enter the Karst Plateau. This offensive opened the first battles of the Asonzo. At the beginning of the first battle of the Asonzo on 23 June 1915, Italian forces outnumbered the Austrians 3–1 but failed to penetrate the strong Austro-Hungarian defensive lines in the highlands of northwestern Grisia and Gradisca. Because the Austrian forces occupied higher ground, Italians conducted difficult offensives while climbing. The Italian forces therefore failed to drive much beyond the river, and the battle ended on 7 July 1915. Despite a professional officer corps, severely under-equipped Italian units lacked morale. Also many troops deeply disliked the newly appointed Italian commander, General Luigi Cadorna. Moreover, pre-existing equipment and munition shortages slowed progress and frustrated all expectations for a «Napoleonic style» breakout. Like most contemporaneous militaries, the Italian army primarily used horses for transport but struggled and sometimes failed to supply the troops sufficiently in the tough terrain. Two weeks later on 18 July 1915, the Italians attempted another frontal assault against the Austro-Hungarian trench lines with more artillery in Second Battle of the Isonzo, and despite initial success, the forces of Austria-Hungary beat back this bloody offensive, which concluded in stalemate and exhaustion of weaponry on 3 August 1915. The Italians recuperated, rearmed with 1,200 heavy guns, and then on 18 October 1915 launched Third Battle of the Asonzo, another attack. Forces of Austria-Hungary again repulsed this Italian offensive, which concluded on 4 November without resulting gains. The Italians again launched another offensive on 10 November, the Fourth Battle of the Asonzo. Both sides suffered more casualties, but the Austro-Hungarian forces repulsed this Italian offensive too, and the battle ended on 2 December for exhaustion of armaments, but occasional skirmishing persisted. After the winter lull, the Italians launched the Fifth Battle of the Isonzo on 9 March 1916, and captured the strategic Mount Sabatino. But Austria-Hungary repulsed all other attacks, and the battle concluded on 16 March in poor weather for trench warfare. The Asiago Offensive Following Italy's stalemate, the Austrian forces began planning a counteroffensive Battle of Asiago in Trentino and directed over the plateau of Altopiano di Asiago, with the aim to break through to the Po River plain and thus cutting off the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Italian armies in the northeast of the country. The offensive began on 15 May 1916 with 15 divisions, and resulted in initial gains, but then the Italians counter-attacked and pushed the Austro-Hungarians back to the Tyrol. <laughs> Later battles for the Asonzo Later in 1916, four more battles along the Asonzo River erupted. The Sixth Battle of the Asonzo, launched by the Italians in August, resulted in a success greater than the previous attacks. The offensive gained nothing of strategic value but did take Gorizia, which boosted Italian spirits. The Seventh, Eighth, and Ninth Battles of the Asonzo the 14th of September to the 4th of November managed to accomplish little except to wear down the already exhausted armies of both nations. The frequency of offensives for which the Italian soldiers partook between May 1915 and August 1917, one every three months, was higher than demanded by the armies on the Western Front. 
Italian discipline was also harsher, with punishments for infractions of duty of a severity not known in the German, French, and British armies. Shellfire in the rocky terrain caused 70% more casualties per rounds expended than on the soft ground in Belgium and France. By the autumn of 1917, the Italian army had suffered most of the deaths it was to incur during the war, yet the end of the war seemed to still be an eternity away. This was not the same line of thought for the Austrians. On 25 August, the Emperor Charles wrote to the Kaiser the following, The experience we have acquired in the 11th battle has led me to believe that we should fare far worse in the 12th. My commanders and brave troops have decided that such an unfortunate situation might be anticipated by an offensive. We have not the necessary means as regards troops. Topic: <laughs> Tunnel warfare in the mountains. From 1915, the high peaks of the Dolomites range were an area of fierce mountain warfare. In order to protect the soldiers from enemy fire and the hostile Alpine environment, both Austro-Hungarian and Italian military engineers constructed fighting tunnels which offered a degree of cover and allowed better logistics support, working at high altitudes in the hard carbonate rock of the Dolomites, often in exposed areas near mountain peaks and even in glacial ice, required extreme skill of both Austro-Hungarian and Italian miners. Beginning on the 13th, later referred to as White Friday December 1916 would see 10,000 soldiers on both sides killed by avalanches in the Dolomites. Numerous avalanches were caused by the Italians and Austro-Hungarians purposefully firing artillery shells on the mountainside, while others were naturally caused. In addition to building underground shelters and covered supply routes for their soldiers like the Italian Strada del 52 Gallery, both sides also attempted to break the stalemate of trench warfare by tunneling under no man's land and placing explosive charges beneath the enemy's positions. Between 1 January 1916 and 13 March 1918, Austro-Hungarian and Italian units fired a total of 34 mines in this theater of the war. Focal points of the underground fighting were Pasubio with ten mines, Lagazoi with five, Col di Lana, Monte Sif also with five, and Marmalada with four mines. The explosive charges ranged from 110 kg to 50,000 kg of blasting gelatin. In April 1916, the Italians detonated explosives under the peaks of Colonel Di Lana, killing numerous Austro-Hungarians. Topic: 1917, Germany arrives on the front. Following the minuscule gains of the 10th Battle of the Isonzo, the Italians directed a two-pronged attack against the Austrian lines north and east of Gorizia. The Austrians checked the advance east, but Italian forces under Luigi Capello managed to break the Austrian lines and capture the Bandschitzer Plateau. Characteristic of nearly every other theatre of the war, the Italians found themselves on the verge of victory but could not secure it because their supply lines could not keep up with the front-line troops and they were forced to withdraw. However, the Italians had nearly destroyed the Austro-Hungarian army on the front, forcing them to call in German help for the much-anticipated Caporetto offensive. The Austrians received desperately needed reinforcements after the 11th Battle of the Isonzo from German army soldiers rushed in after the Russian offensive ordered by Kerensky of July 1917 failed. The Germans introduced infiltration tactics to the Austrian front and helped work on a new offensive. Meanwhile, mutinies and plummeting morale crippled the Italian army from within. The soldiers lived in poor conditions and engaged in attack after attack that often yielded minimal or no military gain. On 24 October 1917 the Austrians and Germans launched the Battle of Caporetto Italian name for Coberid. 
Chlorine arsenic agent and diphosgene gas shells were fired as part of a huge artillery barrage, followed by infantry using infiltration tactics, bypassing enemy strong points and attacking on the Italian rear. At the end of the first day, the Italians had retreated 19 km 12 miles to the Taglamento River. When the Austrian offensive routed the Italians, the new Italian chief of staff, Armando Diaz ordered to stop their retreat and defend the fortified defences around the Monte Grappa summit between the Ronconi and the Tomatico Mountains, although numerically inferior 51,000 against 120, the Italian army managed to defeat the Austro-Hungarian and German armies in the First Battle of Monte Grappa. Topic 1918: The war ends. Topic <inaudible> Second Battle of the Piave River, June 1918. Advancing deep and fast, the Austrians outran their supply lines, which forced them to stop and regroup. The Italians, pushed back to defensive lines near Venice on the Piave River, had suffered 600,000 casualties to this point in the war. Because of these losses, the Italian government called to arms the so-called 99 boys Ragazzi del 99, the new class of conscripts born in 1899 who were turning 18 in 1917. In November 1917, British and French troops started to bolster the front line. Far more decisive than Allied troops was Franco-British and U.S. help providing strategic materials steel, coal and crops, provided by the British but imported from Argentina, etc., which Italy always lacked sorely. In the spring of 1918, Germany pulled out its troops for use in its upcoming spring offensive on the Western Front. As a result of the spring offensive, Britain and France also pulled half of their divisions back to the Western Front. The Austrians now began debating how to finish the war in Italy. The Austro-Hungarian generals disagreed on how to administer the final offensive. Archduke Joseph August of Austria decided for a two-pronged offensive, where it would prove impossible for the two forces to communicate in the mountains. The Second Battle of the Piave River began with a diversionary attack near the Tonal Pass named Le Wine, which the Italians repulsed after two days of fighting. Austrian deserters betrayed the objectives of the upcoming offensive, which allowed the Italians to move two armies directly in the path of the Austrian prongs. The other prong, led by General Svetozar Barovich von Bojna initially experienced success until aircraft bombed their supply lines and Italian reinforcements arrived. The decisive Battle of Vittorio Veneto October to November 1918 To the disappointment of Italy's allies, no counter-offensive followed the Battle of Piave. The Italian army had suffered huge losses in the battle, and considered an offensive dangerous. General Armando Diaz waited for more reinforcements to arrive from the Western Front. By the end of October 1918, Austro-Hungary was falling apart. Czechoslovakia, Croatia, and Slovenia proclaimed their independence and troops started deserting, disobeying orders and retreating. Many Czechoslovak troops, in fact, started working for the Allied cause, and in September 1918, five Czechoslovak regiments were formed in the Italian army. By October 1918, Italy finally had enough soldiers to mount an offensive. The attack targeted Vittorio Veneto, across the Piave. The Italian army broke through a gap near Sicile and poured in reinforcements that crushed the Austrian defensive line. On 3 November, 300,000 Austrian soldiers surrendered. On 3 November, the military leaders of the already disintegrated Austria-Hungary sent a flag of truce to the Italian commander to ask again for an armistice and terms of peace. 
The terms were arranged by telegraph with the Allied authorities in Paris, communicated to the Austrian commander, and were accepted. The armistice with Austria was signed in the Villagesti, near Padua, on 3 November, and took effect at 3 o'clock in the afternoon of 4 November. Austria and Hungary signed separate armistices following the overthrow of the Habsburg monarchy and the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Casualties <coughs> 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 Cumulative casualties of the numerous battles of the Isonzo were enormous. Half of the entire Italian war casualty total, some 300,000 of 600,000 were suffered along the Soccer Asonzo. Austro-Hungarian losses, while by no means as numerous were nevertheless high at around 400,000 of an overall total of around 1.2 million casualties, despite Italian casualties outnumbering Austro-Hungarian ones by roughly 1.5 to 1, and Austria-Hungary's population outnumbering Italy's by 1.5 to 1, the Italians had a major advantage in having to fight on only one major front, whereas Austria-Hungary also had to fight Serbia, Russia, and Romania over the course of the war. Italy also had a considerably faster population growth rate than Austria-Hungary did at the beginning of the war, giving it an additional demographic advantage. Occupation of northern Dalmatia and Tyrol By the end of hostilities in November 1918, the Italian military had seized control of the entire portion of Dalmatia that had been guaranteed to Italy by the London Pact. From 5 to 6 November 1918, Italian forces were reported to have reached Lissa, Lagostar, Sabenico, and other localities on the Dalmatian coast. In 1918, Admiral Enrico Millo declared himself Italy's governor of Dalmatia. After 4 November the Italian military occupied also Innsbruck and Alterol by 2-0-2-2-0-0 soldiers of the 3rd Corps of the 1st Army. <laughs> Italian Army order of battle as of 24 May 1915 Source Topic Notes Topic Sources <laughs> <laughs>